this week on the Danny Brown Show. I bring it with me. You guys pet guys? Y'all got any pets? I love pets. I don't currently have any. I got a lot of kids though, and I'll tell you oh. something. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't think that's the same. I'm like, oh, you know, you don't think you can get that high off bacon. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I eat one strip before I know it. One strip turned to seven. Man, I slept for like two days, man. <laughs> when he gives me a beat, I tend to stare at it until I know what what is this story, and then I, I dive into it. <laughs> It's the Danny Brown Show, sit back, relax your eye ready now, while you make studios. It's the Danny Brown Show, we about to get live, let's go. It's the Danny Brown Show, sit back, relax your eye ready now, while you make studios. It's the Danny Brown Show, we about to get live, let's go. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, doe? It's your boy. Coming to y'all live from Austin, Texas at Wild Me Studios. It's the Danny Brown Show. How y'all doing out there? I got the booth boys with me. What up, y'all? What's up, Danny? What up, man? How What's y'all up? boys doing? Good. Doing good. Yeah, man. I'm feeling good, too. I got the legends in the motherfucking building right now. I got none other than Slug and Anna Atmosphere. How y'all brothers is doing, man? Pretty good. Great, great. Yeah. Can't, can't great. complain. Can't complain. We're alive. That's right. <laughs> so y'all just got the new album out? Y'all on the road now? We're on the road, living the... The dream. Yeah, I, I would definitely say, man, I really look up to y'all. Y'all been doing this shit for so long and just still be on the fucking road right now, just fucking kicking ass, man. It's just, <laughs> that's something. Because I'm, I'm like just getting past 10 years doing this shit. So I still feel like I'm a veteran in some sense. But man, to be on a level, like to still be able to fucking do what you fucking love in front of fucking 10,000 people, thousands of people, whatever the fucking just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really hope. I gotta pray. Really mm-hmm. hope that when I'm in, you know what I'm saying, I'm still be able to do this shit, man. Definitely, man. It, it's uh, we're very fortunate to still have this job. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. And and and, 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 it, and within that, we're still learning how to do it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like it's still a process. So it's still it's like even though I know we're supposed to be veterans, it still feels like we're still figuring it out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like there's new things all the time that, that show up or arise inside of what we're doing. We're like, oh, look at that. And if we do that, you know what I mean? And so it's like, it's it's, it's yes, crazy. Especially with making music. I feel like I, I never stop learning. Like every project I make, I fucking figure out, like I almost like opening up a new door. Yeah. And then by the time the next one comes, uh, I figure out something. And you guys have been doing this about 10 plus albums by now. Like, what the fuck, man? Like, goddamn, yeah, man. I'm just now, yeah, yeah, <laughs> man. So like with the new one, man, what the fuck? Like, what was the new approach on this one? Uh, this one was, you know, this one we made during the lockdown. Okay. Uh, or at least that's when we kind of started making it, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the approach was, well, let's make a, let's make some music. And 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 we had a couple of different ideas going on, different projects going on at the same time. But this one specifically, we knew, you know, we do things and we're like, oh, kind of like how we were kind of before the mixtape era. Yeah, but we were doing things that kind of were the same concept of mixtapes, where it was just like, oh, let's just make this, put this out, throw this over here, throw this over here, and then this is a real album, and then this is just for fun, and this is, and then this is a real album, and, and so this was our real album, and so yeah. we made it in a way we never made an album before, which was that we we built it in sequence, like we 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 built the sequence of the album from the first song and then we'd go what's gonna be next and, oh. then, and then he'd give me track two basically and then I would write track two yeah it wasn't wasn't like picking beats mm-hmm. right it was just like one at a time yeah. and, and yeah. He, he whatever he gave me I had to go in on and figure out what am I gonna do this what, 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 what is this supposed to be right and, and then I could look at well what was the song right before it oh so if I wanna put easter eggs in this song to come off of that one to yeah. start kinda interweaving the story together kinda you know which is like in the past and, and like many people probably, you, you make a lot of songs and then you go, oh, these are yeah. my favorite ones. And, and, I'm gonna, you, and then I'm going to compose an album out of these. This was different. We, we were composing the album as we went. And it was amazing. It was an amazing exercise in just thinking about more than just that what's right in front of you, but also having to kind of use your peripheral vision and, and think about what's coming after it and what's before it. You know what I mean? It was it was kind of cool. It was dope. That was um, sort of like um, writing a novel in some sense then. Yeah, like a book. Yeah, almost. yeah, yeah. You know, Which it, I would say, your fucking titles, every title of the fucking album, I always see the title and be like, oh shit, this is about to be some <laughs> shit. It's almost like a fucking book. You know what I'm saying? Then you always like, every album I feel like you have like, running themes of concepts and shit like that. I feel like one of your, your projects is like, the, I feel like one of the first like concept albums, I feel like. You know, we we have been messing with that for a long time. When I was younger, there was albums that kind of gave me that feeling, even though behind the scenes maybe it wasn't like that. But like there was, 
you know, Jungle Brothers done by the forces of nature, I felt like was a, was a concept album. Mm -hmm. And that was 89, I think, 88, 89. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that had a huge impact on me when I was a kid, you know, to, to look at it and go, oh, there is so much packed into this. I have to, I have to slowly peel back the layers and whose voice was that? And all of this kind of stuff, you know, uh, X Clan to the East Blackwards was, what? A, was, a, X -Clan. was a concept album to me, you know what I'm saying? And so it was kind of like hearing that, that, you know, PE, all the records mm -hmm. they put out had long ass yeah, titles definitely. and they're, and so that's kind of the school I'm from is in, in the sense of, oh, that was what was informing me. Those, those, those long titles from Public Enemy, the, the fact that they would, they would have a concept, even within that concept, you can move around and do things. There's, there's songs that you could probably fit into that concept that another artist might not even realize they could put in there. You know what I mean? But Chuck and Flav and the Bomb Squad will figure out how to get it in there. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's to me. That's that's a big part of the fun of making these things. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's definitely. like figuring out how to how to crack codes, cheat codes, make your own, how to how to solve puzzles. You know what I'm saying? That was something that I stole from evidence. He said that once. He was like, You gotta crack the code. And I'm like, no, I can't stop cracking ah, codes. Everything's a shout code. out the evidence. That's the brother right there. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, man. So on the production side though, man, like mm -hmm. you didn't start you've been doing this shit since it was fucking MPC sixties and shit, man. So <laughs> yeah. like what the fuck are you using now? Like are you fucking with any other new shit? No, no, no. I still have an ASR ten. Oh I've, I've, shit. I've had that since the early 90s and um yeah i just stuck with it it just feels right but now obviously i have pro tools and stuff mm -hmm. and i i work with a lot of musicians a lot of times but the last 15 years or so and um yeah so we, we get Still it in but with I, old faithful huh? yeah yeah but that, that is the i do all my sketches there all my sketches start on the sr10 and then wherever it goes from there maybe like i said musicians or or the or new technologies or whatever that get involved but yeah. yeah, yeah. That, so, yeah. how you feel about like, um, like it's so much new AI software now, where you can fucking just like, I, yeah, <laughs> I think yeah, it's a, it's, it is amazing. It is amazing, and I've said this before too. I I don't know what the future is for that for me, but mm -hmm. as of right now, I haven't really dived into all that stuff. I have no idea how it all works. Yeah, I like the idea of getting stems and shit like that, but I also like the what I do. I like what I've always done, which is start off with sampling and things like that, and then figuring out how to make something out of that. So mm -hmm. by getting it replayed, and it's just kind of the fun for me. Yeah, know? and then mm -hmm. y'all been doing it so long. Like, man, and I remember... Like back in the day, but y'all were doing the rhyme series. How was y'all clearing these samples, man? Like, was that ever like a headache for y'all? Nah, you know, we are from the school of, um, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for <laughs> <laughs> than to ask for permission, you feel me? Uh, and 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 you know, here's the thing though. Now, in, in, in now that we're older, you know, we've had to maneuver a lot of that stuff from the past. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's just like you know, you just you just maneuver with good faith with people. You know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's 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 one of those things. You know, we used to look at it like this: a if if somebody pinches you, then you're on the radar, yeah, and that's a good sign. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like you know, but now it, we we do a lot more stuff with live musicians and just getting and, stuff replayed and, and really mm -hmm. just try to yeah. and even beyond replaying. Re, you know, sometimes things will just be inspirational, mm -hmm. and and then the music will end up slowly going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like. But you know, it's it's all over the place, and the copyright laws are fucked. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this, this. I mean, it, 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 here's what's interesting. How are they going to? They they've been suing people for sampling, not just in hip hop, but in in, in other electronic music for for so long. But what's next now that AI is about to really take things yeah. to the next step? It's kind of like I think this was the gold. We we that was the golden era. The '90s and the early 2000s was the golden era for sample lawsuits. You feel mm -hmm. me? And now moving forward, it's it's like the Wild West again. It's like mm -hmm. brand new. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. of all the AI shit, where it's kind of like, oh, I'm not gonna sample Marvin Gaye. Just give me some Marvin Gaye sounding shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, nah, I'll sample that. And how are you? You know. Yeah. And now they they have like so many. You can go like these um, subscription based sites mm -hmm. where they like people are just like bands and stuff are just uploading shit. Yeah, that, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can just sample from and it's yeah. like you know mm -hmm. free and shit and all that shit, which I think is dope too. But um, I you think know, the heart I, 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 I think that's dope too. But you know, I've, I sift through some of that shit and yeah, it's just it's, like yeah. oh, it's not it's not that tight really. Yeah. You know, and then <laughs> and then just the sound of it. And to me, uh, um, 
uh, to me, it's all about the sound of things Listen, sometimes. Man, the, you know the, what I mean? The, the, the best samples come from the people who were tormented, either were struggling with financial shit, life shit, whatever. So the best music came from that kind of hunger, that desperation. We say that about rappers. We're mm -hmm. like, the best rappers sound like that. But think about the best samples also came from people who were in positions. And you can't, you can't AI that. You, know, if you feel no. me? Or, or, and you can't just upload yourself on a bass doing that from your bedroom. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I think records always will, yeah, will, will be valuable to this. That's like one of my favorite things is just being on the road or like going overseas and just going just going to vinyl stores and shit and just looking yeah. up records and just finding some crazy shit. Like, nobody never sampled this? And yeah. be like, no, yeah. I ain't nobody, yeah. don't nobody even know what it is. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I want to yeah. use this Polish funk. No, yeah. Yeah, 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 you know, for yeah. real. Like, mm -hmm. No, that's the dopest shit, man. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we got this show coming up. I'm so excited to be playing with you guys, man. Got some legends on the bill, man. We at the Red Rocks, mm -hmm. 917, man. Come through, see us, man. It's going to be great, man. I, I, the Red Rocks is haunted to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a good way or in a bad way? I guess in a little of both. You know, here, I'm going to tell you something, bro. Uh, <laughs> it's not a single record of a, of, a, of a human being hurt or killed by a ghost. So I'm, I welcome them. I welcome because it's like... Now, we've we, we reached a point where you know, aliens might be a different story. Okay. But ghosts, like, nobody ever been hurt by ghosts. No. Just, right? We've been, we've been living with them forever, mm -hmm. and nobody's been hurt. We can stop being afraid of them. You know what I'm saying? It's like grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be afraid of a grasshopper either. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. Every time I'm in, um, I've played there a few times. Every time I'm there, it is a different feeling. I guess it's because it's such a legendary place that everybody played. You know what I'm saying? So it's just mm -hmm. like a different... I've, I've always had good shows there. You know, the energy of the audience there is different. And I say this to people because they're like, oh, Colorado is so fun, right? And, and Red Rocks is so fun. It's like, but Red Rocks is not just Colorado. It's a destination. People who maybe don't get to see you in a club in their city will see, oh, they're playing Red Rocks, and they'll book a whole vacation to go to Colorado mm -hmm. and see mountains and stuff and then go to a Red Rocks show while they're there because everybody's like, I want to see a show at Red Rocks before I die. Yeah. And so then what I think happens is people just kind of wait for an act that they like to play Red Rocks mm -hmm. and then they make a trip out of it. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. so you, it's like Vegas. You play in front of people who are not actually from there. Oh yeah. You, you know, hella people are from Colorado that come to Red Rocks, of course, but there's there's always this welcoming. It's almost like Red Rocks is like, yeah, bring it on. You Where you live, yeah. Albuquerque, come on up. Come mm -hmm. to the party, come to the party. It's like it's like an open yeah. party for everybody. You know, It is beautiful there. Yeah. Like just when you're playing and watching the sunset and shit, you get just like this fucking angelic yeah. feeling or some mm -hmm. shit. And so like, I, but I will say, man, I mean, especially when I was smoking and shit all the goddamn time, man. Performing in Colorado, man, with that air and shit, man. I've had one of some of the most tiring shows mm. in the fucking world. But I always used to make it worse on myself with drinking and all that sure, shit. Sure, so mm -hmm. sure. Now yeah. that I'm sober, I'm pretty sure I fucking, you know, I play a better show than I did before, you know? You yeah. know, it is it is true. The mountain states, the air is thinner. You got to respect it. You got to go into it and you got to pace yourself. You got to, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you got to get sleep the night before. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I agree. Especially, we're old as fuck, right? <laughs> and so and so for the mountain states when we play them uh, not even just colorado but like salt lake or or or, or even uh all the way into new mexico you know what i'm saying all the way up you, you all the mountain states when you're up higher man you got to respect that because your oxygen's thinner you know what i mean yeah like you definitely can't go out there just barking and you know run and then out you of, know they got the fucking weed like especially when they first got the weed and shit legalized everybody was just giving you everything man i remember the worst shit i ever had i had some fucking thc bacon and I was just, it was so good. It was like bacon with like brown sugar and all type of shit. And I'm like, oh, you know, you don't think you can get that high off bacon. You know what I'm saying? So I eat one strip. Before I knew it, one strip turned to seven. Man, I slept for like two days, man. They had to fucking get me up at the hotel room to go do the show, man. It was all bad, man. But yeah, I love I love Colorado, though. I But see, we, we from them cold states, man. I will say you guys are from the coldest place I think I've ever experienced in the fucking America, man. But I also do think mm -hmm. us being from those places does spark creativity because you only could be out what mm -hmm. fucking like yeah. six months <laughs> out a year or some shit yeah, 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 you just locked in recording yeah. you know man i always tell the, the homies in los angeles like y'all don't even have basements right because of the ocean you can't have basements mm -hmm. but where we live basements are like a, a thing because we need a place to put stuff because you can't just put it in the shed over there it's yeah. too cold to leave right so <laughs> so we make music in, in basements basement, yes, yep. here. and music. it's it, and yeah. yeah exactly and it's like i do think that there's a certain type of creativity that comes out of just even being buried in the ground mm -hmm. while you're working. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I never like, thought about that. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's something to this that is different. And it's a, and also it forces you to also be a little bit more like, 
I'm going to learn how to do this. I'm going to, I'm self-taught. I, I learned how to tap this out. I, I didn't have a mentor over here to just show me that mm -hmm. I sat in the basement by myself until, until my mom told me to go to bed. You know what I'm saying? Like working, working, working. And cause yeah, you, like you said, six months out of the year, you ain't, you're not yeah. leaving the house. Fuck that. You fucking bone chilling cold. Yeah. I swear the cold as I ever been was in Minnesota, man. And that was just like, oh my God, man. Like I thought Michigan was cold, but I'm like, this yeah. is like 10 times worse yeah. than Michigan, man. Pretty extreme. I, I think they're pretty similar to me, like especially upstate Michigan. It's, oh it's, yeah, it's, see, I've never really been. You know, I'm Detroit. So sure, I don't, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. What that, that's like a whole other country to be. I mean, but sure, Detroit got that lake effect shit too, right? Where the the, yeah. the, 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 the 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 hawk right off the lake comes mm -hmm. and gets you. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. like Chicago got it too, and they're even a little lower. You know what I mean? Chicago like, got that wind. Yeah, that shit is fucking. That shit will freeze your tears, man. Yeah. Like that mm -hmm. shit. Is, <laughs> oh my god, man. Today we're here with a sponsor for your bouncing bundle of joy. No, we're not talking about a baby. We're talking about your baby makers. That's right. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. But just like babies, your delicate little guys have sensitive skin and deserve products that are not only skin safe, but made with safe ingredients. That's where Manscaped Platinum Package comes in. From razors to shower care, this package goes above the gold standard for your body hair. So treat your beautiful boys to the world's finest toys at Manscaped.com and use our code DANNYB for 20% off plus free shipping. It's important for us to have a healthy grooming routine because when you look good, you feel good. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for a man to deserve it all. They designed this package to allow you to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite products. Inside the Platinum Package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Trimmer, Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo Conditioner, Ultra Premium Deodorant, Ball Crop Anti-Shaving Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Ball Toner, anti-shaping boxes, and a shared travel bag to hold your goods while traveling. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DannyB at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at Manscaped.com. Use code DannyB. Use the Platinum Package because the gold standard is no longer good enough. But yeah. Fuck, man. You guys got the fucking Star at First Ave and shit, man? Yeah, they gave us one of those. That mm -hmm. shit is fucking amazing, man. First Ave is... Um, also, one of my favorite venues to play because my mom was a huge Prince fan. So I just grew up watching fucking Purple Rain every fucking day. Imagine coming home from school and seeing the bitch jump in the water every day, man. So We did watch that every day, too. <laughs> I, watched it, I watched it every day, too. Yeah. My, my, it was one of the ones. My mom allowed me to have that on VHS. I was probably like yeah. 13 or 14. And we would, we would I mean, mm. I've never seen a movie more. Like that's that that's the movie I've seen the most out of any movie. You know, if you put it on right now, I, I can yeah, I, I can you know I can I can rap the lyrics. I know mm -hmm. all the words. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. It was like my mom's house cleaning thing. Like I would come in from school, she'd just have it on playing, yeah, like listening yeah. to the songs. Yeah, because it was like a, it was like a soundtrack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Shit, I, I wanted to be more stay so bad. Who did? Yeah, I mean, it's the coolest like... moment when he when he cocked that jacket open part. Man, that's my favorite part, man. <laughs> <laughs> was more that he was from Minnesota too? Yeah. Oh yeah, shit, yeah. man. I actually seen the, um, what was that cartoon shit that Mike Jill did? You ever seen that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That shit, uh, get off, Tales get from on, the Tour Bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, shit yeah, was yeah. so yeah. fucking yeah, funny, great, man. Yeah. man that, that is really underrated, man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You I know, well, like, because everybody, unfortunately, everybody was under dude's shadow. Yeah. You know, the purple shadow, right? Mm -hmm. Because Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, oh, yeah. to this day, they're, they're, getting their, they're getting their flowers, but in the 80s when they were really killing it, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was still looking at Prince. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and they were over here like banging out hits for people, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and and the whole, you know, the, I mean, but that's kind of what happens when you have somebody, Minneapolis is not considered one of the hubs of the entertainment, you know, uh, underbelly. The, so when somebody does come out of Minneapolis, it casts a shadow and that does something weird to the scene. You know what I'm saying? And so when Prince casted that shadow, I guarantee you there was hella Prince haters. People who oh, definitely. really should have mm -hmm. been like, yo, the dude made it. We all went to high school with him and he's mm -hmm. killing it. And instead it was people like, oh, I could play bass better than him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so it's like, and so I, I, I've seen that time and time again with, with people who make noise and get out of the city. It's like, uh, when you're when you're when you're local and big, we're proud of you. But once you start getting out, then it's like, wait, you were ours, mm -hmm. but now you're not ours no more. So now, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and you know, I don't know where I was going with this, but <laughs> it, it felt it's important real. at it's the real. time. It's real. Yeah. That's, that's just real. It's just like even with y'all, y'all used to do um, sound set. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've actually had the pleasure of playing. Yeah, and um, you guys will have such a diverse lineup every time. It was almost like a lot of people that, you know, y'all had before they blew up or some type mm -hmm. of shit. And it was just, you know, I, I always respected it because 
people always look at us or whatever like some backpack shit or something like that. Mm-hmm. But y'all would have the whole landscape of hip hop at all, that shit, man. That's one thing yeah. I really respected about yeah. that shit. Man. That was the plan with that, man. Because because in that city, there was so many people who were into the underground rap. It was it was big. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like there's a there's a great scene for it. But then there's also people in that city who are into hip hop who had no idea who atmosphere was. But they know who this is. This is this is. You know what I'm saying? So we always wanted to see if we could j- j- just put the whole tree up Mm -hmm. not just this branch or this branch but just the whole tree make sure that we're representing as many different voices as possible because that city does you know it it was like that that city deserved that that city had so much art in it there's so many people there that there was no reason for us to all be in some kind of echo chamber with each other you know what i'm saying like everybody needed to be exposed to all these different types of rappers and I think it was, you know, really beautiful. I think I think it is. I think it's a really beautiful thing for that town. Mm-hmm. I know I'm, I'm really happy that we got to be a part of that. I remember, I met Lizzo back then. Yeah, that's how I said <laughs> back then, man. She's killing it right oh, now. Man. You know what I'm saying? She's on top of the world. So, yeah, man. I've seen fucking Lupe Fiasco make a storm. I thought that was the craziest shit ever. He's yeah. like, it's about to rain right now. Rain, come. I was like, oh, my God. This nigga's a fucking wizard or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> Actually got up on you guys, man, just me being a fucking gamer and shit. And I think the first time I ever heard you guys was on fucking Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk 2. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that no. thing probably really did wonders for us. Really? Yeah. Oh, we, hear that, we hear that a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. I went and checked you guys out, and I remember I knew I was hanging out with this chick, and she's like, what, you never heard this shit before? And she had all y'all shit, was like, put me up on shit. I was like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I was just full into the rhyme series shit, because it was like, man... I didn't know, just like probably any other kid that just grow and just be into hip hop, you think it's just the top 40 shit or yeah. the shit you see on the radio mm-hmm, yeah. shit like that. And then when I, I feel like I got up on you guys, like Rhyme Sayer shit and like Dev Jux, like all around. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's like yeah. motherfuckers that's more like me than what I think, you know what I'm saying? So I, I really want to thank you guys for that, man, because it really... And just back then, I know it had to been... I mean, it seems like it would be a lot easier now with like streaming and shit, but just being independent back then, man, it was probably fucking crazy. And then you guys put out... So many amazing artists, man. My, one of my favorite albums ever is fucking Operation Doomsday. So mm-hmm. just even... How was that, like, working with his ass? Uh, you know, it, I will say this. Like, me and his relationship was, was very fucking amazing. It was fun. We When we seen each other, it was love. It was friend. As far as on a business level, I never really had to work with him like that because I don't, I'm not in the office at Rhyme Series like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I avoid that place. I only go there if I had to. I don't even show up at atmosphere meetings. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> well, just because I always felt like, okay, as as me and him are, are, are part of the, 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 the family of co-founders of it, and as an artist, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for me to also be in there making decisions about other artists' shit because it felt like, well, what if I got an album coming out at the same time as you, right? And you're like, yo, why is Atmosphere in got a full page ad in the source and I don't? It's like, well, there's these conflicts of interest there, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And so I always try to just stay as far away from the actual business of it as possible and be more of like an artist liaison so that... I could holler at an Aesop Rock or we could talk and, and we relate to each other and we can even both complain about the label if we want, you know, because mm-hmm. that's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, I, and so, so my relationship with Doom was just smiles and beers. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It was just like always like joyous. The, 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 the dude was always in a good mood mm-hmm. around me. He was always joyous around me. Because I remember um, hearing that album for the first time because I, I never really heard something that was so lo-fi i think you know what i'm saying yeah, just yeah. that was so forward thinking now you hear that kind of shit all the time even though it's fucking easier to fucking make a crispy ass product mm-hmm. motherfuckers want it to sound fucking warm like you yeah. know sound like a vinyl yep. that's where because you know we just did the um Head, up. headphone music yeah you know what i'm saying exactly. yeah yeah you, exactly yeah. you want just want that warm sound you just don't because shit's starting to sound too computery yeah like just too, yeah mm-hmm. like that's why I've, i had to ask you like what the fuck is you making beats with now you know what i'm yeah, saying because yeah. y'all shit still got that warmth to it you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so yeah man we'll jump into some of these ex dannys man you'll always hit me up danny at the danny brown show.com that's danny <laughs> at the danny brown show.com our first up we got ex danny ex danny creative process hey danny what are your top priorities throughout your creative process for music what kind of music legacy are you trying to leave what would you like to be remembered for? Also, congrats on sobriety. Wishing you well. Um, I don't know. I think my top priorities, my creative process is just, um, I mean, before I would just always try to like catch lightning in a bottle. It was just being inspired by something and just try to get the idea out as quick as possible as I've, you know, been making music for so long. Now I've just been growing into it. Now it's all more about the post. 
like I put down an idea, but then I always keep going back and tinkering it and tinkering it. And I think um, for the most part, the legacy I want to leave behind is just not to be put in a box so much. Like, you know, I see a lot of times where artists scared to be themselves in some sense and just try to make music that they think the people would like. And I think that's like the first mistake because, you know, I just, I, I like I say, man, listen to you guys and Dev Jux and I was a huge fan of like Dizzy Rascal and stuff. And I always remember that my favorite rappers and some of my favorite music wasn't on the radio. I wasn't mm -hmm. on Top 40 shit. So yeah. just just trying to just, you know, make people just know that music is subjective in some sense. So make what you like. And if it's other people that like that shit, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, when you're trying too hard to make something that everybody going to like or, you know, I guess it is a talent to do that. I guess that's what pop music is in some sense. But I don't think I got that in me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? What you guys creative process is like? And what's the legacy you all trying to leave? I, for me, I do it every single day, at least when I'm home. When I'm on the road, it shuts down. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like a break from music in some ways. But when I'm home, every day I, I turn my equipment on, regardless. It, definitely after 10 o'clock, my family goes to bed and all that shit. I turn on my music and I just start messing around. Maybe I'll just listen to something and then the, it just starts coming. Now doesn't mean I'm going to make anything good that day. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I think I bat like maybe 50-50. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So every other day I got something kind of worth doing. And just like you, in every way, I, I just mess around with it a little bit. And then I go back to it and tinker and tinker until there's something real to show him or whoever I may be working with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and the legacy part, I just want as much as I can possibly fit in before I go. I want as much music as I could possibly make before I leave this earth. Mm, you know? That's dope. Mm -hmm. My process is a little different than his. I stare at something until I make, I stare at the rock until I make it move. Mm. And so when he gives me a beat, and I, I turn my shit on every day too, but sometimes it'll just end up answering emails. Yeah. Sometimes it'll just be to listen to other people's shit, you know, but, but when he gives me a beat, I tend to stare at it until I know what, what is this story? And what is the personality of this music? And then I, I dive into it and then I stick with it until I got at least a skeleton, at least, you know, 75% of it is there. And then I'll come back and edit and, and, and tinker with it and mess with it, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But it's like, I'm kind of like, I, 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 I face it and I force it to, to, to submit to me or, or, or I force myself to submit to it, but I don't get up until I have something there. Yeah, no, that's how I am. It's almost like, um just like an inspiration, like one thing would a, a trigger me and then it just flows. Yeah. Like sometimes when I'm really having a hard time writing, it'd be like, uh, just leave it alone, yeah. come back, you know? But for the most part, I find myself studying more so than I'm actually working. Yeah. <laughs> like I would just yeah. fucking like, if, if sometimes where like you can find inspiration in some sense, like I'll, I'll fucking just Google what was the top albums of 1960. Yeah. And you know, and I look through the list and be like, I never heard this one. I never heard this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then yeah. just find shit to listen to. And then... You know, shots out to algorithms. You know what I'm saying? Once you <laughs> click a couple of videos, then they say, you know, you get the recommended or something. Like, hey, what the fuck is this? You know, yeah, yeah. Cabaret Votor. What's that? I don't know what that is. You know, then before mm. you know it, then you just find all this fucking crazy music. Now, I've been fucking finding crazy. I, I listened to one fucking song from India that was in like the 1980s, electronic Indian music or some shit. Now, my shit is just all fucked, man. So it's like, <laughs> it's been some dope shit, though. I'm like, oh, yeah. shit, I'm about to be on the road. I'm going to flip this shit right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I found it especially like with making beats and shit. I feel like, you know, you can fucking listen to records and shit all fucking day before you find that one thing that one bar mm, that yeah. could just trigger some shit and then you just build on top of that and just consistently build it mm. and i had to um like i said i used to always try to just catch lightning in a bottle type shit like mm -hmm. try to get a song done in one take type shit yeah. you know i was one of those kind of guys but then i had the, um the opportunity to work with q-tip and just being around his ass and watch how he work and he'll literally just He'll make you fucking rap for three hours straight, like the same mm. shit, oh. like until you get it down. Until you he's get it one down. of my favorites. That's yeah, it. Just, all my, yeah, my yeah. fucking. It was a fucking honor to work with his ass because that was my my dad. I grew up listening to Tribe. You know, mm. my dad like taking me to school and shit. He always be listening to Tribe and shit. So it was like it was an honor to work with his ass. But just 
him instilling that in me because he just told me like man you only got one time to put it out but you got all the time in the world before you can work on it to put it out mm-hmm. so you might as well take all the fucking time you can to put the love into it so now i've learned that from him i've just been fucking but what's it it's kind of like his ass it makes you work on some shit forever before you can put it out because sometimes i feel like you can't overwork something you know sure, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it turns into some it turns into something Unsoulful, yeah. I think. Well, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Also, you know, I use a painting metaphor. I always, I always end up going there, and it's like, you know, it's like here's the thing. You, I just want to get that horse just right. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, when you stand six feet away from the painting, like most listeners do, instead of standing right up next to it, you know what I'm saying? That it's a horse, no matter what. It's a, <laughs> you ain't got to get that horse. Right. It's a horse. They're gonna yeah. see a horse. It's all about what you're implying and the implications. You know, which, which I wanted to touch that le- that legacy thing, like. I, I, what you say about that legacy is exactly so beautiful to me. This is the only way to live forever is to create things that last, that outlast you mm-hmm. and, and that stick around and that stick around, whether you get to be super famous or you just get 500 people that love what you did. That's how you live forever. And to me, that is what the legacy is for me is to look at it and go, how not only am I trying to live through ever through the art that I leave behind, but also to inspire other people to make art. I don't care if you're rapping or sculpting or painting or whatever, just make some stuff to leave behind so that in a million years, when they come and dig up this rock and look at what was here, this is, this is what we could show them. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? This is what, this is what we left. This is the culture. We weren't, we were not just like the other species on this planet. We, we did all this dumb ass shit (laughs) to, you know, and and, and look at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. all right. All right. Next up, we got scent of a man. Salvador here to ask as a man, have you ever come across the dilemma of smelling another man, a stranger in public? And being taken aback by a scent, is it rude or suspicious to ask what you're wearing? Or do you leave them alone and mind your own business? Um, I don't know, man. I think I would leave them alone and mind your business. Asking somebody what's the scent kind of seems like you're hitting on them. And if, you know, for the most part, men stink, man. I think that's a good pickup line for a woman. But for the most part, I'm not asking no dude what he smells like. For the most part, niggas be smelling like blunts and cigarettes, man, that I ain't around. So <laughs> I don't know nobody wearing no good flavor. But are you guys cologne guys, man? I am. Yeah. Yeah, every day. <laughs> I, I t- I, every day something i've been like that since the 80s though you yeah know I, mean? so I was a teenager you know? i feel like it was a thing like back back in the yeah. day like in the I, 80s and shit everybody yeah. had to smell good my, so. my my shit it's come and gone here and there but yeah it, there's something always but it's like it's like one one little spray on the hand mm-hmm. go like that and that's it i don't like you know it's not like you could really tell, probably. Unless Man, you, I asked, yeah. I asked for a bottle of Dracar for my birthday when I was like 15 years old, <laughs> <laughs> and I made that shit last like five years. Yeah, dude. that's <laughs> the crazy part. Cologne lasts for forever. But it does ever. last yeah, forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Man. That's the crazy part about um, me, man. Like ever since I quit smoking cigarettes. It's like, man, now, like when a person smokes cigarettes, it's like a fucking, like pig pen walked in a room. Oh, it now. smells like, like God yeah, damn. Yeah, but that, that yeah. helps. That helps you not want a cigarette. Yeah. When, you, when you're like, oh my God, this motherfucker stinks. I, like, this yeah. I used to like, smell? Yeah. 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 I used to make people do deal with this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah. man, that's that's the worst. Yeah. Kissing bitches and shit. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but God damn. They, mu- been, they must have really liked me. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can't believe it, man. But It yeah. felt like a lot more people smoked back then. Like, even because we we quit like over 10 years ago Mm -hmm. but um it's just less and less you know people seem to be doing it oh yeah i think they they pricing people out man cigarettes (laughs) are like fucking five hundred dollars a pack nowadays like i know and every year they say they're getting rid of menthol i think they actually i think i've seen something they said they're done with them in california or something i don't know don't get me the line but i remember Mm -hmm. they used to have fucking ashtrays in mcdonald's dude i've been on planes i've been on planes with ashtrays in them Mm -hmm. god damn you know that had to been forever ago. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, I've been on some old ass planes where they still had an ashtray yeah, out there. You're like, yeah. fuck, man. Goddamn, I seen that Denzel <laughs> flight movie. I hope this ain't one of those situations. <laughs> that should be scaring me, man. Like, just like I just um, flew to Australia. I fucking flew longer than I was actually there, which is fucking 20 hours there and 20 hours back. And I mean, it was, it was, I felt like I used to make it, um, way worse on myself when I was drinking and shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I was, just being in airports, like, that was like a bar to me. You yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Now it's like, uh, you know, just, you know, but flying, it's, it's, I, I feel like I'm real confident 
about being on the road again because I felt like um, before I thought I was making it easier by getting fucked up and shit and all that shit. But no, I was really just making it harder on myself. Like even with touring, I would be fucking getting so fucking hammered because I get like, you know, I get nervous before I go on stage. It's just like probably anybody else. I'm yeah. human, you know. Mm-hmm. So I always want to have that drink to just, you know, open up and shit. And, but you know what? The drink turned into the bottle. The next thing you know, you wake up in the morning, yeah. you're fucking hungover, and all you're doing is just trying to get yourself ready for the next show, and you're just sick all fucking day. And by the time you feel good, it's time to perform, so you're drinking again. It's just like this endless fucking mm-hmm. loop that I was putting myself in. But now, ever since I've been sober, it's like going on stage has become like a therapy for me almost, mm-hmm. you know, where I, I'm like humbled in that sense. Like, man, I can't believe, you know, after I've been doing it for 10 years and people still know these songs and they still get enjoyment out of this shit. So it's like I'm just fucking like taken back by that shit, man. And it's the only time like, you know, I guess that's what I was using drugs and everything for. It's just that escape, mm-hmm. you know, where all your problems go away and you're not worried about anything. And it's just, you know, now it's like being on stage, just you and the mic and the music. And now that's like my escape. So yeah. I'm really excited to get back on the road. So how's the touring been for you guys, man? It's been good, man. You know, we started this year. We didn't start hitting the road till May. Uh, we did Europe first and the shows were all phenomenal. And then we came back here, did a couple of one-offs here and there, and then started this tour about three weeks ago. We're mm-hmm. about three weeks into this tour. And it's great. This might be the hardest tour I've ever done in the sense of, like, you know, we're second out of four. We're used to doing our own headline tours. Mm-hmm. And so doing this gets us an opportunity to play in front of people who have no idea who we are. And that's a gift and a curse because you're sitting there going, okay, well, how do I sell this to these people? And, yeah. and, 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 and you, not that we don't give 110%, but now we're giving 130% because we're really trying to swing it. And it's 110 degrees out Fuck. and we're out. And since we're second of four, the sun is always right yeah. in our face. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, so here I am 50 years old, <laughs> jumping around. Thankfully, there's shorter sets because of the fact that we're second of four. Yeah, yeah. We're, you know, we're doing 45 minute sets. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, but, 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 on a physical level, you know, it's it's definitely one of the more harder tours I've ever done. I've done Warp Tour, and that physically was really hard, but also I was partying, so I don't remember yeah. it, you know, whereas this one, I remember it all because I'm not partying, you know what I mean? And so it's like, it's it's physical. I ride the bike every day. I, I bring a bike with, and I go out and do five to 10 miles every day just to start my cardio in the morning. That way, when I hit the stage at 5.30 p.m., everything is already kind of like loose, yeah, loose you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i and i know that's been a, a help for me because I, I i take advantage of the real estate you know what i mean i move around a lot you know what i'm saying and so it's like so so just making sure that you know i'm getting i'm i'm getting my calories in and i'm expelling my calories out and drinking all the water i can and just making sure that i'm just but it's 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 the most grueling one from a physical space. Yeah, that, yeah. I always yeah. touring is like going to war. <laughs> I always call it like going to war. I mean, I ain't, it ain't like that because I ain't catching no bodies. There, you know what I'm saying? I'm a war woman, man. But it, it's, so. it's kind of yeah, it can be kind of tough. And then just like you, you know, I I used to spend all. The, I loved going on tour to party. Yeah. To me, that was the reason to go. Mm-hmm. That was the dream to even do the damn thing. So, but now doing it sober for eight, nine years or whatever it's been now, it it's boring in a lot of ways. So I just have to, you have to find, at least for me, I have to find different ways to occupy my time. Long ass walks. I walk my ass off yeah. and just what I have headphones on, just thank God for podcasts now. <laughs> They're the most entertaining thing in the world. You just walk around, listen to that shit. Next thing you know, oh shit, I killed yeah. three hours. Yeah, exactly. Now, now you could just do, your, do the show, have a few jokes with guys, you know what I mean? And I can push through the time a little bit but it is difficult at first so what's so being sober on the road it, it's difficult no you know? I, yeah. I mean that's something i know i'm going to struggle with mm-hmm. you know because even like i said i was just recently in australia and just you know that urge was there you Hell know yeah. i just learned yeah. so much in rehab i just know i'm not about to fuck it all up you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. just being sober is just a battle every day to you be know honest. consciously yeah. find something to 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 fuck about with you know so that so that all your time is not productive find this one thing that you can do that's your fuck off time but that you're you're also going to nerd out on like for for aunt he goes record shopping mm-hmm. and maybe mm-hmm. spends as much as he used to spend partying but 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 you know and 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 for other people i know it's it's just like books you know what i'm saying they, yeah. they start reading mm-hmm. books whatever fucking bird watching i don't care but something that isn't work but also isn't 
bad for your body. You know what I'm saying? Isn't bad for you know what I mean? Well, well, but that way you're filling the void, the the party void, the drug, yeah. the drug void, the drinking void. You know, for like I've gone through phases. Right now, biking is one of my things that I, I know that that's part of why I'm not drinking you know what i'm saying it's like it's like and i'm not even sober but i know if i'm drinking a ton on tour i'm just gonna be more inflamed and tired and yeah. beat down you know what i'm saying and so it's just like uh you know but even for me i'll go to the record store and spend an hour and 30 minutes just looking through records looking at pictures picking out a couple to buy and i know that just having that that time and that space to be myself and, and to just nerd out about some shit that's that's just not important is a, is definitely it definitely is an escapism it helps yeah. fill that void of that that mm -hmm. escapism definitely because what a lot of people don't know i mean touring can be like a big you know a big ball of fun and partying all the mm -hmm. time but for the most part it's boring as fuck yeah it's Just a job it's a real day, job man, it could be sad it could yeah. be sad it could be depressing it could be all these it's lonely bro and then the fucking days off you're just like what the fuck am i gonna do with my time i mean for me i told myself that i'm gonna um Cause I've been everywhere. I tell myself I've been everywhere, but I've been nowhere. Yeah. Cause I used to get to these cities and I just used to get <laughs> fucked up. I used to find where the weed at. Like where the weed at? Where the, you know what I'm saying? Where the drink at? You know what I'm saying? But I never would go see shit. Yeah. So now I'm like, you know, going to museums or just seeing what the city is about. Like yeah. going around and seeing these places now. Cause you know it is. That's one thing about touring that is a blessing that you are able to travel the world and be able to see all these different places and mm -hmm. shit like that. So I am going to start going out and going oh, to see yeah. the landmarks. I and, can't wait to see your Instagram page. <laughs> <laughs> Pictures of churches and statues. You know, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's that's go. What let's do, go. Man. Let's so, go. Just getting into that. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to bring my equipment with me and just get and golf and work. Because like you guys, I've, I've made this album I'm about to put out during the pandemic. And after um, that, when I first got here, Peggy, he was coming here and we did Scaring the Hoes. So, you know, I'm, I'm about due for that time to start working on the next one. You know what I'm saying? Might yeah. as well get a jump start on yeah. it, you know? So... Mm -hmm. You know, I never really been that ahead. I was the type of motherfucker that, oh, it's time to make another album? Oh, shit. <laughs> so I now, you know, I got nothing but time on my hands now, so I'm just about to start early, you know? Mm -hmm. So right. Finally, right. finally getting ready to get this one out, man. I'm super excited, man, because... And that's another thing, too, where, I, where we were saying, we were just talking about just getting inspiration and shit. This album, you know, it's been done for a fairly amount of time, but... And, you know, you'll get scared with thinking, like, something to get dated or something like that, but... Being the fact that, like I say, I make my shit not concerned with what's going on in the culture or what's going on in the scene and shit like that. And I just make music, which sounds selfish in some sense, where you're like, I just make music for me. But I do. And when I listen to it every time, I'm like, no, this shit, it might be perfect timing. Because that's what a lot of people don't understand about making music. You can make the fucking best shit in the world. You could be the first to do it. But you might be ahead of your time with that shit. Yeah, you, yeah. Never, you know what I'm saying? Never know. Never know. Yeah. yeah. People always be like, man, it ain't about who did it first. It's about who did it, who, who's the most successful with it type shit, you mm -hmm. know? But this, this album, I'm really confident in it because I was able to sit on it and work on it for so long and tinker it. And, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm really excited for people to hear. All right. Next up, we got um, Music Jammers. Danny, what's good, man? When it comes to music, I love various genres, but there's definitely a few genres that I hated growing up and swore I never fuck with. But as I get old, I find myself jamming in some of that shit. For example, I despise country music, but here I am jamming Morgan Wallen. Ain't that the thick one? Oh, yeah. Do you have any genres or artists who come around? <laughs> oh, no, that's a nigga. <laughs> See, I don't know about I, I, I be seeing this one country country chick, man, with the thick, with the with the ass, man. All right, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know all country music, whatever, man. Mm -hmm. Do you have any genres you hated coming over the years to Young Denny? I mean, for me, yeah, it probably was country. I will say country. But once you get to Texas, man, it, you can't escape it, man. After a yeah. while, man, you'll hear a banger every now and then. You're like, all right, I kind of fuck with this shit. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, man, I think... um. I, I don't hate no music, man, to be honest, man, because I find myself like, um, I used to be in band, in the jazz band and shit, and I'd be like, man, why the fuck we got to play this shit? You know, <laughs> can, you know, can play some Swiss beats in the summertime, you know what I'm saying? Remake that shit or something, you know? And, but then when I got older, man, I started getting into jazz music and shit, man, and it's a vibe, you know? You just start, and I feel like, um, you know, as rappers and how we could be so... um. You know, well, I can't say for you. You guys always, I feel like you make a lot of shit just open to interpretation type shit, which I learned. And and then it's like, man, you know, rap music could be so direct. You know, he's talking about he getting money. He fucking your bitch. He wearing the dopest clothes. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, you start to take inspirations from other shit. Because like they say, there's nothing new under the sun type shit. So I find myself more so getting 
influenced by other genres than actually rap music and I take from that and put it into my shit. So mm-hmm. for the most part, man, I don't I don't hate any genre though. Is there any like weird genres y'all fuck with? Nah, polka. That's, I don't know. That's a tough one. That's <laughs> I don't a tough know one. <laughs> if I can fuck with the accordion like that, man. But no, you can listen to some of that fucking that narco music they be doing in Mexico and shit. Hey, and they got the accordion listen, jamming uh, uh, on that um, shit. Listen, man, a polka ain't nothing but a corny waltz, right? And mm-hmm. so if you go look at the waltz and, and see the slower version of that, even with the accordion, there's a sadness in there. And mm-hmm. then it's like, well, yeah, all party music, which is what polkas are for, for a certain group of people, right? Party music is supposed to take your mind off of your problems yeah you know so what's it communicating so that's that's how i see polka you know but i'll tell you what i was a wedding dj oh shit back in the day when i was like said we'll say 17 18 19 years old i was a wedding dj and prior to that i didn't have much experience with music outside of hip-hop r&b and classic rock and being a wedding DJ meant I had to learn some country because I had to go do a, a, a wedding reception out in the sticks and people are asking for, you know that one song that goes like this and you got to learn all this, right? And so then I had to learn what was hot in all the genres. I had to learn some polkas. I had to learn some polkas. waltzes. Yeah, bro. We had, to, we, had, we had to play that shit. I used to do this thing on the turntables with the hokey pokey. You remember that song? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would be, put your right foot in, put your left foot out. I would be backspinning the two on two turntables <laughs> and, and fucking with the people because it was like an easy trick. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everybody would laugh. You know what I mean? Like, But nonetheless, that set me into this space of being like, I want to learn more about music. So then I got a job at a record store. And that's when I discovered jazz in, in the way that it was never shown to me. Jazz was always this like background music that I would mm-hmm. hear sometimes at the house, but in other spaces, or maybe I'm sitting in a lobby and I think this is jazz, whatever. Nah, working at this record store, it was basically a jazz and blues record store. And it it, 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 it opened me up to all kinds of stuff. And it opened me up to indie rock because the girls that would buy those CDs were so cute, I had to figure out what's going on. <laughs> what, what, what is this? You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, but it, it just got me going into all. And, and, and now I don't hate nothing. I could find it. Yeah. Because really, I'm just looking for sadness in your music always. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so I could find that in any genre of music. Yeah. You know? And I feel like that comes from a lot from with producing into it too. Like mm-hmm. when you're sampling, like you're trying to always find the illest loop or some shit like that. So you'll be going through these crazy ass genres and just yep. going through fucking, you'll get up on shit like this shit fire. You know what I'm saying? Especially like I feel like going to other countries and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll just be seeing the type of music that they had. And then you'll realize that. Uh, a lot of shit wasn't different. Like motherfuckers in Japan was making soul music and yeah, shit, yep. and then it's like everywhere, yeah. And then it's it's better to fucking sample from that shit because ain't nobody really touched none of like mm-hmm. all those fucking overseas records and shit, man. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I definitely want to you know when I get to Europe and shit like that, start going because you know most of this shit here been fucking used up, used and abused, yeah. you know. But yeah, I would say far as like um like I was saying like with the new software producing and shit like that, man. I remember it would take. I used to um. My first beat machine was a SP-303, and okay. it would be so fucking hard to chop shit up on yeah, that motherfucker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even when you did chop it up, just layering it and shit like that. And mm-hmm. then I had a MPC-1000, and then, you know, I, I've, you know, that's when, by the time, that was like YouTube and shit. So you mm-hmm. can watch YouTube and figure out, you know, I've seen a, Anything, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. seen Pete Rock, the way he chopped up a sample one time. Just mm-hmm. watched it, and I just watching that video, I just learned so many fucking tricks. And I was like, oh, so I was able to chop on that. But now, you got... they chop it for you like you know what i'm saying yeah. like with this new shit which you can fucking just you can take a record and just chop that shit to bits where motherfucker don't even know what the fucking sample was but mm. now they got shazam and all these fucking sample haters which i hate the yeah, most sample yeah. snitches <laughs> you can go now and just type any album what was the samples from this yeah, album they have a whole too. compilation of this shit man it's yeah. certain shit in music that needs to be kept a secret man i hate sample snitching man yeah it's just whack it's yeah, whack. man, it's yeah. the worst shit ever, yeah. man. Yeah, but somebody's making money off of that shit. Yeah, that's what sucks, yeah, man. That, that, it's, 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 you can't stop it, though. You can't stop the profit. Oh, mm-hmm. God damn it. All right. <laughs> Next up, we got ex-boss photos. Hey, Danny. So the other day, I was scrolling through an old email account, and I noticed a request from my old boss asked me to join her Google Photos account. I assumed this for an old office party or something. I accepted. Two days after accepting an email from Google Photos at 2.30 a.m., it fucked up being pictures and videos of my boss and her husband fucking around. Now, my question, is it okay to look at my ex-boss pussy? Should I have any guilt over this? I never hit on her or flirted with the lady. This is all totally off the blue. She is cute, and I'm curious what the monkey looks like. Any advice would be appreciated. Love the show. And I think she wanted you to see what the monkey looked like. That's what it seems like to me, man. That's a bit creepy, though. 
You just can't jump it off with the nudes and the sex videos, man. That's just, that's <laughs> actually, she's obviously a deviant. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> and then I mean, she's your old boss. Now, if it was your boss, current boss, then that would be a little creepy. I would. It would be a hard time for me to go into work and look her in her eyes, knowing what the monkey looked like. So, for the most part, man, no, I think that's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> but it got to be like a, I mean if you were still working for it that would be like sexual harassment and shit right yeah 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 wait so, wait so did he get this on accident or did this get sent to him on purpose I guess it was like a oh, like you say it was an old email maybe they were joined in on that account already and maybe she didn't know who was all getting but you loading shit up on Google man it's, it's creepy man I don't, I don't do that shit no more I mean when the phones and shit first came out you know it was you know you didn't really understand. So, yeah, I was sending dick pics every now and then. You know, my mm. face wasn't that random. That's one thing I knew not to do. But now it's like, man, you know, you got clouds and all type of shit, man. You don't know where this fucking photo's going, man. The motherfuckers <laughs> yeah. just sit up. Next thing you know, you your make a mistake. Your dick's in the cloud. Yeah, your dick's in the cloud now, man. That's got to be some fucked up shit, man. You can't be doing that, man. Can, can I talk to can I talk to Anthony? Anthony, listen, yeah. man. Here's what I would say to you, bro. Like, send her an email to let her know that you received this. Because she... This might have went to all her employees and you just happen to still be in the list. And this could be like a, a issue. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm sure it's probably resolved now because this who knows how long ago Anthony wrote this, right? But if you know, I would if you're gonna look at them, the least you can do is also let her know, hey, these pictures showed up here. Did you intend for me to get them? Because that's where the real mystery is. Yeah. You know, and then, then then you know, you know yourself what what what's what. You know, hell, oh, I'm supposed to look at these. She's like, yeah, Anthony, yeah. I wanted you to see this shit. It, otherwise, let her know so that she can at least like clean up, try to clean up the mess if there's a mess out there. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna chime in just for the fuck of it. Who gives a fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> I would have looked at them bitches. Yeah, I wouldn't even be asking about this shit. <laughs> I would have looked at them. I know me. I'd have been like, fuck that shit. Let me check these motherfuckers out. Let me see what that motherfucker uh, uh, But about. still, let her know. Let her know. Let her know that they showed up so that, you know, because she's going to find out anyway that they showed up. She's going to see it. So at least at least come, 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 come with it. I think the lesson in this is just... This is not a problem. Yeah, the lesson in this to me is <laughs> never check old emails, man. It was a, It's an old email <laughs> for a reason. That's why you don't go back, man. Just only going forward, man. Don't check no old... Because I can't imagine what's in my fucking old emails. Probably ain't number beats. I doubt if I got any pussy pics from my ex-bosses. But it's just probably random beats from motherfuckers and shit, man. <laughs> 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 Which I might find some fire. I might need... But I don't, that's the thing. How the fuck you remember that old password? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean... I, like, I always see me, like, you know, I'm always scared of getting hacked and shit leaking. Sure. So every time I make an album, I start a new email. So I already know I got fucking, you know, just to send, you know, you got to, and then like my label's in Europe, so I have to fucking send music over there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You just don't know. You know what I'm saying? Fucking, you know, getting hacked. Have you guys ever had to deal with anything leaking and shit yeah, like we that? Yeah, we've had leaks, especially prior to how things are now, you know, when, uh, let's say you would turn in a record and there'd be a release date and everything would be kept a secret till then somebody you know because the publicist got the record and press is getting the record three weeks early and you always knew something was going to leak and there was going to be a little bit of that whereas now i think it's less of an issue now they leak it on purpose you know what i mean like now i and not only that but i don't think anybody really it used to be a thing to be like i got that new shit mm -hmm. and i don't think that's yeah, a thing no that's, more yeah you're that right doesn't exist. i don't think it is yeah. the same like it used to be you know what i'm saying and so it's like if you if you were first to have it that was a huge deal Oh, I got the the J Electronica before yeah, it came yeah. out. Whereas now, motherfuckers would drop. They'd be like, "Oh, I just got it back from mastering. Put it up. It's, it's it, it don't matter no more." Because I used to think I was so fucking cool. We used to get um. Because that's when albums came out on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. So I got real cool with um the guys at my local um, record stores and shit, and they would sell me the um. The album's on Friday for double. That was us. So yeah, I'll be yeah. able to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was us. So I'll be able to go to school on Monday and already have it. Like, I yeah. got that new Nas. And yeah. everybody be like, what the fuck? How do you get it? Hey, yeah. let me listen yeah. to it. You know, I have my Walkman and shit. And that, 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 <laughs> I used to feel like I was such a cool guy for that shit. <laughs> Man, all right. We're going to jump into some white people shit. White people shit. All right. Dogs running errands. I work at Home Depot and notice that people frequently bring their dogs to the store with them 99% of the time. There's no service animal vest. On top of that, I'm pretty sure 100% of the time the dog is Caucasian. So now I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's bringing your dog slash pet to go shopping with you white people shit. P.S. Love to show your true like No, that's animal lover shit. We always go through this shit, man. I don't think white people shit is caring about animals, man. That's just, it's animal lovers in general. I know for me, man, like my dog Ditto, you know, she 
you know, she be having problems and shit. Now I'm be like leaving her at the crib by herself. So if it's a quick little run to somewhere, man, I bring her in. Plus she's little. I bring it with me. You guys, pet guys, y'all got any pets? I love pets. I don't currently have any. I got a lot of kids though, and I'll tell you oh. something. <laughs> Listen, I don't think that's the same. Thing. I can't. I, can, I can't even. I can't even convince my kids to come with me to Home Depot. Right? Mm -hmm. I would have to bribe them. So that makes me question. Does your dog really want to be at Home Depot? Are you doing your dog a favor nah, by bringing your dog? No, leave your dog at home in the yard or some shit where the dog can be a dog. You know what I'm saying? But people are out here making their dogs do things that sometimes I question, does your dog really want to be at this festival right now? Fuck no. No, <laughs> your dog don't want this loud ass music. And not only that, but it's like, what if your dog licks some paint up in Home Depot or some <laughs> shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, I don't know. I, and that's just my stance on it. But, it, but I, I look at pets like kids. Don't make your dog do something that you wouldn't make your kid do you know what i'm saying like like uh or or even you know i got homies that bring their pets on tours yeah and i'm always like man i don't bring my kids on tour because it's it's not something they would necessarily choose to do there's no real good place for them to sleep that's safe there's no seat belts on a bus whatever i'm an adult i can make a decision to be here and if something gonna happen to me tonight that's okay i chose that but when you're putting your dog or your kid in that position that's a little I'm not into that. You know I had saying? a tour manager. He'd bring his dog every fucking where, man. The motherfucker shitting on the bus in the green room. Uh, hell, hell no. Nah. Fuck around eating hell pizza nah. off the ground and uh, shit. No, that's, that's what, what I'm saying. saying. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, hey, we know how that road is. It's rough. See, yeah. me, I would be scared, man, because I know, I mean, like, it's that dog, you know, it's a lot of scary shit happening on the road. I'd be scared my dog would just run off the tour bus or some weird mm -hmm. shit. And get know? hit by something or, or mm -hmm. anything. Run away. You yeah. know what I'm saying? In a city where you're like, how am I supposed to find a dog here in mm -hmm. El Paso? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's yeah. like, and so, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think you should bring your dog to Home Depot. I never thought about it like that, but you're right. Dogs don't want to be fucking going nowhere. They want to chill at the crib. Now, if it's some place where the, you think <laughs> For that, real, they want to chill they, at the they crib. They kind of do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they want to be around random people. My dog hate other motherfuckers that ain't me, so she barking at motherfuckers randomly and shit. So, yeah, man, <laughs> I can totally see that shit, man. Just, yeah, I mean, I'm one thing about me, I've never been a pet guy. I always... My girlfriend's had pets, and I just end up getting into another relationship. You know, what yeah, I'm it's me too. Same here, same here. And you end up loving the dogs and shit. Cause I'm what a, I'm an emotional person, man. Last thing you know, the motherfuckers die, and now you sitting around crying about the dog yeah. and shit like that. But now we got this new dog. Well, Ditto, she's she's oh, she just passed a year old now, and she's like. That's the love of my life right now. I fucking love that dog. <laughs> it's fucked up. Because then, you know, like even that, it's one thing. You know, you got your girl, and you know, you go on the road, y'all missing each other and shit. Now I got to leave. I'm missing two motherfuckers, three motherfuckers. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I miss my dog. What's the dog's name? Ditto. Ditto? Mm -hmm. What kind of dog did you say what? It's a hairless chihuahua. <laughs> Which, I want to look in the camera and see what's up to Ditto. Ditto. Shouts out. Ditto, if I was there right now, I would take my thumb and put it in your ear and pet the inside of your ear, and you would be like, I like this motherfucker. She got a little ear infection right now, so I don't know. I'll wait then. <laughs> <laughs> she has a little ear infection, man. Yeah, my dog has problems, man. I did a 23 of me for my dog. It's a fucking. It, it, it's a, uh, <laughs> Uh, where's your dog from? Uh, I think from Texas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's a Chihuahua, but it's a quarter Frenchie. And uh, you're not supposed to be mixing those dogs like that. So she has all type of medical problems and shit, mm -hmm. man. So I'm always worried about her ass. So that's why I always like leaving her alone for some time. But that's one thing I would say, man, having a dog, it did instill some discipline in me. Because, you know, it's like, you know, I, I mean. You got to keep it alive. You got to you gotta be aware. You dogs gotta... and kids aren't the same thing, but. You know, when I'm gone and shit, I'd be like, hey, I wonder what Ditto's doing. I wonder if she's okay. You know, I'm always worried about her and shit, so that's mm -hmm. my baby. I mean, I, I think about that, too, for my girl, too. I'll be missing you, too, baby, but Ditto. I always worried about Ditto. All right, next up, we got shadow boxing. Hey, Danny, is shadow boxing in the mirror white people shit? I know my ass has done it, and I'm white as hell. <laughs> Let me know what you think. <laughs> no! Have you never had any, like, boxing training and shit, and you just randomly doing some shadow boxing? I don't know about that one, man. I, I think that's just some uh, autistic shit. But for the most part, uh, <laughs> uh, I think uh, shadow boxing is some fighter shit. If you fucking training and you fighting and shit, that's the way you loosen up and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm very excited um, about the fight that's coming up now. Are you guys into boxing? I don't pay attention yeah. until there's a fight to watch, and then I'm down yeah, to sit one and watch the, it. The one to watch is coming up, man. Fucking Earl Spence versus Terrence Crawford. I've been waiting on this for fucking years. I've been... um. I seen a Terrence Crawford fight before. It was good. It was yeah. like a, two years ago. There was a big one he had, I yeah, think. Yeah, they yeah. both undefeated pretty much, and we don't know who... I mean, the one thing I love about boxing, 
in these type of matchups where we don't know who the fuck gonna win. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like sometimes boxing be like, I know this motherfucker gonna win. I know this, you know, and it might be an upset. You know, that's the cool shit. This it won't be an upset if either one of them win. Like it's just this is. I feel like these motherfuckers about to be fighting for the next ten years. <laughs> like, yeah. If they smart, one they got to take one a piece and just mm-hmm. drain this shit out as long as they can. You know what I'm saying? Which <laughs> I feel like if business wise, they probably already. I don't want to. Don't get me to start talking about shit like that. All right, man. Spin the motherfucking wheel and we'll get up out of here, man. But yeah, shadow boxing, man. That's some. Have you guys any, any training? Like, no. Uh, 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 yeah, I was uh, doing a little nah, Muay Thai, man. man, but I couldn't hold no pads, man. I was like, fuck that shit. All right. <laughs> Pickles. I'm not really like a pickle eating motherfucker. I mean, um,. Yeah, pickles. That's like some. I don't know. What, 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 what was your thing about Zolo? What was this one about, man? We have someone in the office that really, really hates pickles, and uh, the people wanted to hear your opinion on it. Pickles, man. I mean, I don't get me wrong. Like, um, growing up, you know, used to go to the liquor store and they used to have all these random pickles. You can get the hot pickle. You know, the girls used to eat them a lot. Eat them with hot Cheetos and shit like that, man. I actually used to just drink pickle juice straight out the jar. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> as I grown up, man, I'm I'm not that poor anymore. And <laughs> so, so curing hydration with pickle juice is not a thing for me. But I think, I mean, pickles is, out here they got the fried pickles, which I don't know, that seems, because uh, pick, is pickle a vegetable? It is. Really? It is. It's so many different types of pickles. Uh, pickles is like pregnant people shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> pickles and ice cream. Really? Yeah. Are you a pickle eating motherfucker? Listen, I'll tell you. <laughs> but they smell forever. Though. I'll tell you a couple things about pickles. One, if you have acid reflux. Oh, it helps with that? It helps with that. The pickle juice specifically, um, I would always suggest people don't eat before bed. You know what I'm saying? But if you're eating at night after the show, a little pickle juice after you eat or a pickle after you eat can help with the acid reflux. Mm. It's, it's a natural. It, it, and, and here's the thing. I think that that might. I've never Googled this, but I've always th- kind of thought about this, and, and I just keep forgetting to see as far as the origin of, you know how you buy a sandwich? There's always a pickle. Yeah, yeah. I think the origin of that might be because you're supposed to eat the pickle after the sandwich so yeah. that you don't have heartburn. Yeah. Because back then, people used to mistake heartburn for a- or acid reflux for heartburn. So the I think the pickle was like what you eat after the pastrami sandwich or whatever because it will help you with any heartburn you might have from the sandwich. That would make a lot of sense. Goddamn. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I can't say I'm not like a. I mean, I like pickles here and there on like a burger or something. I really like the um, pickles on a Chick Fil A sandwich. I take those pickles, but sometimes, man, pickles can be gnarly, man. I've had some gnarly <laughs> pickles, man. Yeah, like, oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smell, like, man. like anything, like, you said, like they stink, man. Anything yeah. in a jar could be fucked up. You grab the wrong one. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, them jumbo shits in a bag like that. That's a, that's like a hood staple. You yeah, know what I'm saying. Yeah, because you, you just buy the one bag, the one pickle, <laughs> right in the store. Yeah, I used to see girls when I was in like you know high school, middle school, and shit. Girls were like that was like they 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 hood snack. They would stop at the store, get some hot Cheetos, a pickle. Nice little juicy juice, exactly. which had to have been fucking they stomach up. When I, but like you say, the pickle was saving them. <laughs> God damn it. I learn something new every day, man. Hey, wait, what is a Twinkie? A Twinkie pickle? Nah, they ain't got a that. A peanut butter and pickle sandwich. No, that's a meme. That ain't real. Okay. That can't be. See, I thought we've crossed the line to where memes are real now. You know what I'm saying? I like, guess so, man. If they put it in your head, you've experienced it. So that was um, the, that's a peanut butter and pickle Inside of a Twinkie. I will I will go on record to say peanut butter and pickles work together. I mean, it, ain't that what Elvis ate? Oh, no, he uses bananas. Yeah, uses yeah, banana, banana, peanut butter. Oh, banana and peanut butter, yeah. Gnarly. He wondered why he was taking a shit when he died. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't wonder that, but thank you for putting that in my head. See, that's what I'm saying. It, once it's in your head, it, it exists. Yeah, because I actually seen a, um, a Elvis documentary in... Um, he was talking about what, what is made. I mean, made whatever. But she used to make his pickle and banana sandwich. I mean, whatever. The banana and peanut butter sandwiches. Mm. He had her sneaking hot dogs in the, in the hospital for him. All type of shit. All right, yeah. man. We got to get out of this. But he was on hella drugs, too. You know what I mean? He was definitely doing the drugs, man. All right, man. We up this, out, out this motherfucker. Thank you, motherfucker, so Yo, much for coming through, man. Thanks for having us, man. Atmosphere, yeah. man. Like I said, you can see us, 917, at the motherfucking Red Rocks. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make sure I get my oxygen tank. Get your, get your, your, let me run down the lineup too. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's gonna be us. It's gonna be Danny Brown, uh, Souls of Mischief, Legends, Legends, Mister Dibs, uh, Grouch and Eli, uh, Breakbeat Lou. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. 
It's gonna be it's gonna be quite the party, man. Oh yeah, it's yeah. gonna be great. I'm yeah. I'm honored to play with you guys, man. It's gonna be fun, man. And I, you know what? I'll I'll, I'll reach out to them in advance and just be like, yo, c- calm down the ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> calm the ghosts. The ghosts down. of the Red Rocks, man. <laughs> All right, love you, motherfuckers. We out. See you next week. Peace.